What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Sons of the Force Beginner's Guide. I'm going to show you the ins and outs of this crazy game so you can stop surviving and start thriving. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, we want to complete a few tasks before leaving your crash site. So you're going to open your inventory, unzip the waterproof bag, and find a lighter, GPS, your build book, and most importantly, your hatchet. Now while we're here, let's assign a hotkey to the hatchet. By hovering over the item and pressing any number, 0 through 9, you can assign that item for quick retrieval. You can also right-click on your day pack and select what items you would like to have access to on the fly. After exiting your inventory, you're going to want to walk over to the man rolling around on the ground. This is Kelvin. Kelvin is the best kind of friend. He does exactly what you tell him to and he doesn't make a peep. Now once you've stood him up, you can give him instructions. So hold the interact button and select the task you'd like to give him to complete. These can change based on your proximity to certain items in the world. Now instruct Kelvin to follow you and begin picking up items in your immediate vicinity. You'll find things like batteries, watches, grenades, and pistol ammo. Now we can take about two to three minutes and scavenge for a few necessities around you. Pick up as many sticks, stones, and large rocks as you can carry. Once you're full on these items, open your inventory. You'll want to craft a spear by combining two sticks, a roll of tape, and your knife. For now, just make one. The spear is very useful for catching food and self-defense. You can also hold down the right click to aim the spear and left click to throw it. Now, this is a survival game, so you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner the status icons for your character. The blue bar on the right is your stamina, red bar is your health, and the empty bar next to the health is your armor slots. Your base stamina is affected by things like warmth, hunger, tiredness, and thirst. So be sure to keep an eye on these icons. There are a ton of food in this game, from energy bars and MREs to canned food and fish. Fish can be eaten raw, but everything else needs to be cooked or dried. You can drink water from the streams or drink an energy drink to mend your thirst. Strength is a bit strange. It's not really clear what the devs are intending on doing with it at the moment, but Guns, Nerds, and Steel has a great video explaining this in more depth. Now that you have a basic understanding of the stat system, let's make some moves to get you some much needed equipment. Now you want to open your inventory and select the GPS. Once in hand, you can use the middle mouse button to zoom in and out of the screen. You want to navigate to this location here. Inside the cave entrance is a 3D printer. You will need to select the flask from the options on the screen and craft it. It is also worth crafting a few grappling hooks while you're here. There should be plenty of resin in the printer to do this. Make sure before you leave the cave you have a quick look around for some goodies such as batteries and tape. This will definitely come in handy later. You can fill your flask at any freshwater source such as creeks, rivers, and lakes. Simply remove it from your inventory and walk down to the water. Now we're going to head over to this purple icon here. When you get to the cliff and the GPS starts beeping loud and fast, look up. You'll want to to head up to the top and cut down this soldier with a knife or hatchet. He's going to drop a flashlight and a GPS beacon. Make sure you keep an eye on the amount of daylight you have left and the time, which can be found in the upper left hand corner of your GPS screen. If it starts getting dark, open your inventory and grab a mylar blanket. Place it on the ground and as long as you have a stick, walk to the corner and look for the white arrow. And then just left click for an instant tent. Save your game and sleep through the night. Trust me when I say you don't want to be running around in the dark for now. Now open your GPS and head to this trail intersection here. You're going to come to a campsite with a lot of loose items and the modern axe. Now is a good time to save at one of the tents before moving on. Now we're going to knock out the last of the starting items in one stop. So on your GPS, locate this cave here. It may be next to your crash site depending on where you landed. Now this will bring you to a cave entrance, but before you go in, head off to the right at the base of the small waterfall. You're going to pick up a stun baton and head back into the cave. There are a couple ways to tackle caves. Option one is to try and fight your way through. If you're with a group or you're just a Billy badass, hey, go for it. Option two is best for early game cave diving. So equip your flashlight and a stun baton. Make sure your stamina and health are both full and you have some meds in your inventory. Then you're just going to get to getting. But I can run like the wind blows. Don't stop to loot, just run through it. There isn't anything in here worth dying over in lieu of getting the rope gun at the end. Now when you do get to the end, be quick about grabbing the rope gun out of this case here and taking the zip line as you more than likely have a tale of angry mutants chasing you. Now you have what you need to go and set up camp somewhere. So pick a spot somewhere on the map in this region. Somewhere close to the water, or even better, in the water. Salt water that is. I found early on that cannibals don't like water. Come on. I got a juicy foot. If you build your base in the shallow bay area, you can live in relative peace. You won't need walls or any defensive structures. So building is really easy once you get the hang of it. Now I'm planning on making a full building guide for anybody that's interested, but for now, I'm just gonna cover the basics. You have two different building books. If you're on PC, press B. The first one that comes up is what I call the immersive building guide. This is what it sounds like, a guide on how to make basic to advanced structures with logs, sticks, stones, and rope. Now if you hold down X, you can switch to the classic build book. Now if you've played the forest, you'll be familiar with 
the concept. You choose an item from the book, you'll be presented with a build ghost that will allow you to move and rotate the item before you place it. This is more for storage and decoration, although you can build some pre-designed structures like tree houses or hunting lean-tos. All right, now to build structures, you need a basic understanding of weight distribution. So just like a modern home, you need framing, flooring, siding, and roofing to have a finished structure that's insulated from the elements. Starting with the base of your structure, you can place logs on the ground by picking one up and looking down. It's worth noting that you can carry two logs at a time by pressing the interact button instead of holding it. Holding it will just swap the log out for the one that you have in your hands, which does nobody any good. When you go to place a log, if you see a circle, it will post the log. If you see a rectangle, it will lay the log. To swap back and forth between the two, just look down towards the ground and press R. A good starting structure will require about 100 to 150 logs. You get between five and seven logs per tree, so you can do the math on that. I do have a video explaining how to efficiently gather logs. I'll have at the end of this one, so we're gonna skip that for now. Basic idea is that you're gonna build log holders using sticks and set a zip line from your nearest wood line to your log holders. Attach the logs to the zip line for faster transport. But let's build a basic structure that'll keep you safe and dry. Start at the beach and walk out about 20 to 30 yards into the shallow water. Knee height is perfect. Place four foundations like so, then post every corner and plank the floor by holding a full log or split full log and looking down until you have this arrow indicator. When you finish the floor, place the cross beams overhead until it looks like this. Build a small ramp up to the second floor and then begin placing the posts in the middle on either side like this. Place your peak beam and create your roof pitch by placing logs in an angle on the ends. Then you can begin to plank the roof like we did the floor. Pro tip, if you cut the log in half, you can make a strut by placing the log at a 45 degree angle to help support the weight of the walls and roof. This allows you to span several log distances without having to have a vertical post. This will allow you to remove some of the other posts and spare more logs. All right, lastly, we need some windows and a door. So grab your ax or hatchet and start cutting out the openings like so. When you get done with the door, you can take a log and approach the doorway. You'll get another vertical arrow, which will allow you to use three full planks or one and a half logs to create your door. For a finishing touch, you can use a stick to create a bolt latch that will allow you to lock the door. Lighting is a must, so you'll want to have a few wall torches as well. Open your build book and choose the torch. Place it wherever you like and it will need a stick and a cloth. Build a couple fish traps for easy food during the warmer months. They stop producing when it gets cold, so you'll have plenty saved up or have a backup plan for food. Like I said, you can eat raw fish, but it's better to hang it and hang dry your meat as well to preserve it for longer periods of time. Side note, if you happen to come across some sea turtles. Did you see what I see? You so totally wrong. It just feels awful. Take the shells and combine it with sticks to create a rain catch. This is nice to have close by so you don't have to find a river to get water. So there are many items in the game you're eventually going to want to have. Some are difficult to get, others you can craft, but in no particular order, the items that will help you survive are the pistol, shotgun, katana, winter jacket, chainsaw, can opener, bow, torch, repair hammer, rope gun, rebreather, and of course, the shovel. Now I plan on making a comprehensive guide to all of these items in the future, but for now you can just go to the wiki page and that'll show you all the crafting recipes and item locations. And before you go off looking for these items, be mindful that there is a set order in which you have to obtain some of them. You need the rebreather and the rope gun before you can get to the shovel. The shovel will get you access to some important places on the island, including maintenance bunkers and buried items. Okay, so the order of the key cards in the bunkers is as followed. The first one you're going to do is the maintenance key card. It's found here. So you're going to use the shovel to dig up the entrance. Once inside, the card is found on a desk next to the 3D printer. The VIP card is found here. Head down into the cave, open the latch at the bottom. On your way through, grab the food in the storeroom before opening this door with the key card and grab the crossbow off this poor bastard here. Then you're going to swim for a little bit until you get to the control room. Grab the key card off the desk and head back out the way you came or press forward for a challenging boss fight and more story lore. And lastly, we have the guest key card. This is where we found the 3D printer at the beginning of the video. So you're going to head down the long hallway and turn right into the brightly lit corridor. At the end, you'll swipe the key card and make your way through the sun on the second level pool area until you get to the bar and it is here you will find the guitar the chainsaw and the final key card used for the end game bunker there's also a ton of pickups here like meds ammo money and other craftables so make sure you spend a little bit of time looking around it's relatively safe okay so let's take a minute and talk about your sidekicks kelvin is great for finding sticks rocks logs and fish you can either have him bring them to you or fill a holder which is better than micromanaging careful with the tree houses though there are a ton of videos online of kelvin destroying tree bases with his hapless lumberjacking then we have virginia She's the three-legged, three-armed blonde running around the map in a onesie practicing her ballet from a distance. She's extremely helpful later in the game, so you're going to want to make friends. Oh! Nice shot. High five.
Look at him. Now when she starts bringing you dead squirrels, you'll know she's no longer afraid. At that point, you can give her items like clothing and guns. You may be hard pressed to part with one of only three firearms in the game, but she is a crack shot with a pistol and has saved my bacon more than a few times. Now I'm going to finish the video with a few rapid fire tips that will hopefully help you in getting started or mastering some of the less spoken about game mechanics. Things that can kill you are cannibals, mutants, sharks, drowning, fire, friendly fire, and heights. You can mark locations to revisit by placing a stick in the ground, surrounding it with rocks, and placing a GP beacon on top. Currently, I haven't figured out how to change the icon in game, but if somebody else figures it out, then let me know in the comments. Burning cannibal bodies will grant you bones. Bones are great for many things, from decorating to crafting armor. Be sure to store these whenever you can. Swapping ammo type is simple. Look down towards the ground and press R. For three must-have base builds, click on this video here. These seriously changed the game for me. And one last thing before I go, I am truly thankful for the love and support you guys have shown me since I came back. I'm very excited for what the future holds and can't wait to show you guys some of the stuff that I'm working on. I promise now, now that if you do subscribe, I'll do my very best to earn a few minutes of your time whenever you stop by. Thanks for watching.